Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Zakia, but most of you are my friends on Facebook, so you know that. So I came in, uh, I'm working from home like a lot of you due to Corona, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I made myself a chicken sandwich for lunch. Paige had some spaghetti and meatballs and Nyla is still trying to figure out what day it is and if she wants to come downstairs. Hey Jen. And so, um, if I have some true Caribbean people on my timeline, you're probably going to clutch your pearls and everything else. If you watch this live or probably on a replay, you're going to yell at your phone because I call myself making some oxtails. Whoa. Oxtails. We're going to make some oxtails in the crock pot. So I let the, I don't know if you guys can see it. Mm, there you go. You can see it from right there. Now, this is a very small amount. Oxtails are very, sorry, I'm talking with food in my mouth, but oxtails are very expensive in the store. Hey, cousin, they're very, very expensive in the store. But if you go to a meat market, you can buy them pretty inexpensively, at least now. I don't know how much longer that will be. Um, you can buy them inexpensively. So I break them down into like one pound batches. Wow, right? I break them down into one pound batches. And then what I do is I'll freeze them. So yesterday, I knew my kids don't eat them. So this is enough for me for sure. Um, I knew that I wanted them for dinner. The girls are going to probably have butter steak. And I'm going to have the oxtails. And so... I started to kind of like prepare it. Listen, my silly self was about to put some cream of chicken soup in there. But I remembered that I have some oxtail seasoning with no MSG in there. And I'm going to combine that with my beef flavored broth. So these two should give me a really good base. Then what I'm going to add are some potatoes. Everybody likes potatoes, right? You're a chef. Well, I'm not. <laughs> but I make it. Paige is saying hi. But I do make it do what it do enough so that we don't starve. So I'm going to take out three really small potatoes. And for our next experiment, we will attempt, because I don't know if you guys know, I'm growing all kinds of herbs in my front window. The next thing that we are going to grow are our own potatoes in a five pound bucket. Look at those nails. I'm waiting for the rest of them to fall off so I can do them myself. Got that gel manicure set coming. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have the potatoes. And then we also have some onion. Well, just one onion. I don't like onion that much. Hey, Miss Wanda. I don't like onion that much, but this is enough to give me the flavor of onion without overdoing it. So we're also going to add some celery before it goes bad. I don't really know what flavor. Oh, uh, it might already be bad. It's wilting. It's wilting, but I like the smell that it gives the food. Yeah, so this is why you don't overbuy stuff because then you end up just wasting money. So I'm only gonna be able to use the bottoms of this celery because the top is like eh. but I only want it for the smell then we're gonna add some seasoning salt it's like a general given um and I had some allspice up here as well as some bay leaf so I'm gonna add like maybe two pieces of bay leaf in here with the potatoes the onion the celery and then I also put some fresh garlic clove in there so we shall see how it goes. I don't see my all. Okay, so I only got a little bit of all spice left. I got this from the spice market on um, 9th Street before COVID. Before COVID, damn it. Um, so we have the bay leaf, the all spice, the onion, half of the celery, potatoes, garlic. Then we're gonna season it up with just some. Garlic powder, seasoning salt, black pepper, and all that other stuff. Garlic, yes, we put garlic in there. Don't really know how that's going to taste, but we shall find out. So let's grab seasoning salt. That's always the base of all of my seasoning. 
So we're gonna put a little bit of seasoning salt on it, like so. Maybe a little too much, but I have to eat it, not you. Don't worry about how much I put on there. You season it to your liking. So we got that. Now that's our pepper. We're gonna flip it. Now I'm imagining that this oxtail seasoning has some seasoning to it, like it's oxtail seasoning. So I shouldn't have to do too much, but just to make sure I get the amount of salt that I like for my food. That's what we did. Now we're going to cut the celery up to the point where it has wilted, which is all of this gone trash. No mas. And let me rinse it. And then we'll just cut. We're gonna do one of those non-chef cuts, Kenny, which is go down and just get it off. Don't worry about being all spectacular with it. Let the chefs and the cooks do that. We're trying to actually eat and having it, whatever. It's gonna give a great aroma. This is where I get the aroma from the crock pot. And that comes from the celery. Now I guess the celery gives it some flavor too, but not really all that concerned with it. So I just sprinkle, sprinkle it in. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in our allspice. Yep, LOL, I'm serious. We're gonna add in our allspice. Don't need a whole lot. And I just know this, my roommate um, in college was Jamaican, Alicia, and her mom, she gifted me allspice when I had went to visit her. And it just feels like it's the right thing to do. So that's why we're adding it. Now for the onion, Paige did give us a life hack, which is when you cut an onion, if you don't want your eyes to water, you put a little bit of water in your mouth while you're cutting. We'll see. Mm hmm. Guys, that seems to have work. There was no watering going about the eyes just now. No water whatsoever. Put it in, put it in, put it in, and cut again. All right, onions down, celery down. Bay leaves are up next. Oh, we only did half the onion. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more. So I'm gonna drop maybe about five or six of these bay leaves in there. Don't really know what flavor it's going to give me. Doesn't really matter. But again, it feels like I am pulling the Caribbean-ness out by having bay leaves in there. Then I'm gonna cut the other half of this onion without water and see if my eyes will water. And I think they will, cause I'm starting to feel it. I'm crying. All right. And now I just use this bowl right here to just drop everything in it. All right, cut, cut. Uh, maybe if you don't breathe while you're cutting the onions, you won't cry. Don't really know. Yeah, the water trick does help because I can feel it beating up. I can feel it. All right, here's the rest of that onion. And last thing is the potatoes. Now, if you don't really want soggy potatoes, most people don't like soggy potatoes, you probably don't need to add them right now, which is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to add them now. I'm gonna wait a couple of hours while this is slow cooking. And then once it has cooked enough, then I will um, 
I'll add the potatoes in like the last hour or so. Because I like a little bit of a crunch to my tomato or to my potatoes. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to use my hands. You guys see? I'm going to use my hands to just kind of incorporate everything together. And another reason to make sure you wash your hands. Wash, wash with an R. Wash your hands before you start messing with your food, right? Using natural soap by Zakia, of course. Gotta plug it. All right, now we have that. So we're going to add our beef stock. And I got, see, I got meat and seasoning all over my hands. Hey, Joanne. And this lunch break is almost over, but I am doing double duty. I am making sure that I have my dinner ready. And then when I have my little midday um, break around 2.30, 2.45, I will put the kids' food in the um, air fryer for the win. So now what we'll do is we'll pour a little bit of this beef stock right on top. Just law diet. Um, just enough to coat the bottom. And then... With all of this salt that's in here, let's see, it has water, scallion, onion, cane vinegar, 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 <laughs> salt, caramel, caramel color, thyme, scotch bonnet pepper. I have got some scotch bonnet right here. That came from our, see, I knew there was something else. I'm going to add a little bit of scotch bonnet. That's going to give me that spice that I like. And then this will also give me that nice gravy, I'm hoping. I'm going to send this to my buddy who owns the Jamaican restaurant and ask him, um, Senor, what did I do well and what would you have not done when you were making your oxtails? All right, so we have the oxtails, the beef flavor, the garlic, the onion, the celery, bay leaves, and allspice so far. Now we're going to add the oxtail seasoning. Did I tell you all the ingredients? Ginger powder. Oh, I, I got a little, I got a little twisted up there when I saw the Scotch bonnet, cane sugar, Jamaican molasses. It also has ginger powder, ground pimento, which is allspice, which we already have. So we're going to get a double dipping of it. Garlic powder, xanthan gum, which is a thickener that we actually use in cosmetics. Sucrose, yeast extract, don't know how to pronounce this next one, and sodium benzoate, which is a preservative. All right, so now we're going to open that up. Ooh, it's nice and thick. Now, that's how my oxtail sauce looks when I get it from the stove. So this is going to pretend and make me feel like I got it from the store. And I'm going to just add that in. I don't really know how much I need, and this probably was what I should have used if I was going to, what do they call it? Marinate it a little bit, marinate it. All right, now I'm not gonna put my hands back in for a second time. Instead, I'm going to use one of these mixing spoons and go around to just get that oxtail seasoning coated on all of those oxtails, on all of them. And this is the this is the small piece of joy that I am getting from working remotely, guys. Um, typically, I would not have time to do this, but my lunch break is now doing double duty. Um, hey, neighbor! Sounds delicious. I use the same oxtail seasoning, and it makes a delicious gravy. Just keep an eye on your water. Now, I'm putting it in the crock pot, so hopefully... Hopefully, I might need to add a little more of that beef stock. I didn't put water in here. I did use beef stock because, you know, I can't get enough salt, which is not good. It does cause high blood pressure, but for some reason, the good Lord has saw fit to keep me semi-healthy. I say keep testing them, right? All right, so it's pretty well coated. I'm going to add just a little more of the beef stock in here, only because my neighbor just gave me a 5250. Like, listen, make sure that you don't let that water dry out. So I'm going to add just a little bit more 
of the beef stock and make sure I don't have anything along the sides. But I'm just trying to just stir it up so that everything is coated. But if you guys want the recipe, because for some reason you think I know what I'm doing, I'm going to tell you what we have. We started out with some thawed out oxtails. I go to a meat market to get the oxtails because um, they're pretty expensive when you go to the store and they'll give you like six of them for 20 bucks. Here I have a pound and I actually got three pounds of it for 20 bucks. So, eh. and um, I'm on my lunch break for the full time day job right now. And I said, hey, why not live stream it? So we started out with the oxtails. To that, we added some onions, some celery, some bay leaves, some garlic, allspice, beef stock, and the oxtail seasoning. And then I got a little fancy because when I was reading what was inside of that oxtail seasoning, it has scotch. Can I just drop um, scotch bonnet hot pepper sauce and I have some so I added that in there so hopefully it spices it up a bit and the last thing we're going to do is top it off with just a little bit more of the beef stock just to try and keep it as moist as possible and there you have it we're going to put the lid on it where's my lid gotta look for it don't know where it is um, we're going to put a lid on it and let it sl cook slow and low. And at about 5 o'clock, I will come back and I will cut up these three potatoes to put it inside, along with some carrots. And then that should be enough for me to have my very own oxtails. I don't know how to make red beans and rice. Don't know how to do it. So I'm going to serve it over some white rice. And that's what we have. So... If you have suggestions for what I can do during my lunch break to ensure that we're eating at around 6 o'clock, let me know. What are you cooking for dinner? How early do you plan? Like, are you somebody who plans what you're going to eat before you go to the market and then you know exactly what you're eating Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, love Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Do you know that? And if you do, let me know. Um, and if you don't, how do you know? Like, what's for dinner Monday? What's for dinner Tuesday? All that fun stuff. So I'm Zakia. Here is our oxtail awesomeness, which is going to be cooked in the crock pot. Look at that. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. All right, guys. I'm getting a little bit loopy because I got to go back to work now. I'll see you later.